how hot is my wife? I mean, what a stunner. And I got to say goodbye to this gorgeous creature. I'm not a creature. I'm going to have you follow. I'm a human being. <laughs> this is your Daily Smash for Friday, March 29th, 2024. I'm Rick. I'm Kelly. And I wanted to get her on camera before she gets on a plane. And I'm, I'm flying to New York. So we're going to be in two different cities next week. We're going to be close to each other, though. We'll be across kinda. the pond. <laughs> yeah, right across the pond. I'll be like, eh, hey, hey. uh -huh. I'm going to be sad. I'm going to miss you. I'm going to miss you, too, baby love. My mister. I love you so much. I love you more. I love, I love, I love you more. I wake uh, up in the morning and I look alone, this man. <laughs> <laughs> I wake up the same way. Look at this. It's I'm so like, nice. I, I just can't get we're enough. We're so blessed to have each other. We are. And we say it. We do. I appreciate you more than anyone could possibly understand. I also appreciate my new G Defy sneakers. It's G Defy Friday, baby. I wear my G Defies every time I go work out. We went for a walk today. I wore them. Mm -hmm. and you know what's I wore my black thing? ones. Yeah. Our Patreon, Kylie, whom is a amputee, mm -hmm. bottom, here's a picture. And what an awesome shot of G Defies. <laughs> Thank you, Kylie, for supporting the company. You can yeah. get your GDefies at $30 off using our discount code SMASH30 at GDefy.com. These shoes are awesome. Great support. They're, it has patented technology that they're very proud of. And all I can tell you is you bounce. You have great... You get bounce in the ounce. <laughs> I love it. But Kylie um, is an amputee. Mm -hmm. And she's, this amputee girl got her GDefy clouds. Thanks so much. They're comfy and cozy. There you go. Look. There you go. There she is. They fit one, one on her artificial went, foot. Yeah, they fit. And the other on her, on her real yeah, foot. Yeah, look at that. And you know what? It makes Kylie two inches taller too, just like me. You'll be taller. Kylie when you wear likes them. I like shoes that make me taller. Me, well, I like the I like shoes that make me bounce. Oh yeah. <laughs> bounce. Me too. Ounce. Me too. Um, this. This show is a little is going to be abbreviated because of your your pending travel, my travel, and uh, well, and we've done three by the way. We did our Patreon just now. We yeah. did our smash. We're doing this like <laughs> all at once. So if we look the same and we have like the same hair and the same clothes, he's changed. I didn't. I didn't feel like it. No, I'm. This is a totally different time and place. This is like 24 hours later. You just broke the fourth wall. It's all right. People understand. Um, I want to, I just want, and I did this on Patreon, but on here on the Daily Smash, I want to go on the record as giving a major shout out to Florida Governor Ron DeSantis for being the first governor in America. To have a brain. And the, you know what, the to balls. stand up to squatters and tell them, guess what, what you're doing is wrong and we're not putting up with it here in the state of Florida. He just signed a law that goes into effect July 1st. It's called the Property Rights Bill. And as he put it, we don't want the law to have the thumb on the scale in favor of people that are violating the law. He, he wants the law the, to have the thumb on the scale in favor of law-abiding property owners. And that's what you're going to see here with this piece of legislation, he said. The law shortens the process for a property owner to remove unauthorized people. It's very simple. They fill out a form. They go to the sheriff's office, and then the sheriff's deputies will come over there with them and make sure nothing untoward happens to the property owner while they vacate the property. They get their stuff off the property. They move them to the curb. The cops will help them do that as long as they show that these people are not legally in the house. I don't know why that's so hard to figure out. Well, how is it not hard to follow the Constitution, but yet people seem to be able to vote? coming in freely as an without elite. being American citizens yes <laughs> like, well that's a different story well I'm just, just saying how it's it's like how, how are how are how are people not following the constitution anymore like uh, how is this like this is it, why our forefathers in place the constitution because they knew things that like people want to yeah Break well, the law. Well, you know, law and law is important. Rules are important. The Constitution is obviously very important. Well, not and so are property rights. And if you if you're gonna if you're a homeowner, and you have the misfortune of either not being in your house when someone else decides to move in there, 
or renting to someone who stops paying the rent and then won't leave, well, finally, there's a law that will protect them. And, and what DeSantis said today, on this day when he introduced the law, was we're not New York and we're not California. In Florida, we're not putting up with this. I love that. I know. The guy's got a common sense. Yeah. The guy had common sense. He does. If you go onto my Instagram, you guys, and you go back to when Andy Cohen uh, came after me, because I still have it on there, and you read, I have like probably 4,000, 5,000 comments, comments wow. and you read people that are such lunatics about the mask yeah and like what happened at that time yeah they are lunatics well just these think- are the people that are voting for this like at least Ron DeSantis has a clue mm-hmm. and how about how mad they got at you about the mask thing and now we've learned that you were right all along that the masks are ineffective in the real world. Well, no, in a just, hospital, no, I get no, it. No, when I the wa- right mask. No, when I when I when I was making fun of people that walked into the restaurant with the mask on and then took it off and started eating. Yeah. Like, how dumb are you? And people are like, you are killing people. Right. How dare you, you selfish person. And you if you're I'm standing at the bar, person. you had to wear the mask. And if you sat on a bar stool like six inches lower than the guy standing next to you, you didn't have to wear a mask. But if you were standing, you had to wear it. If you were sitting, you didn't. And and, and, and you put and, it on from the door and, to the, your and, table. And the restaurants are like the police. Like, like when did this? Wait, there was no common sense, no critical thinking. You know, our podcast, our first podcast, was called Rick Unmasked. and Kelly Unmasked because we were so pissed off about the mask rules. And we just realized today we recorded the Rick and Kelly show for this week with our special guest Jill Zarin, and we realized it was two and a half years ago that we started our podcast. Mm-hmm. Two and a half years. And you know what? what? Uh, I'm so glad that I'm fortunate to have all of you guys that have a uh, brain, <laughs> critical thinking that skills. Yeah. Um, even people that are like, you know, uh, you know, left wing. They, you guys still have a brain in your head that follow us. Like Robin Bigelow. I, She's listen, here every day. I, she I have, thinks it's something like me, but she has a brain in her head. I have, like. I have zero issue with anyone who has a different opinion from my own, uh, as long as they're not name calling and, and as long as they're willing to to, to discuss it in a, in a reasonable way. Yeah. Like we can all exchange ideas. We've talked about that before. We should exchange ideas and opinions, and you shouldn't only hang out with the people who agree with you. It's okay to have friends on opposite sides of the aisle. Yeah. I have a fun in the news. Oh yeah, go ahead. In the news now. In the news. So we didn't win the, the mega billion dollar. Loser. Why can't you pick the right numbers? <laughs> funny, Why did I pick the right numbers? Funny you should say that. Because the guy who won picked his own numbers. Shut up. He did. He, he picked, picked his own numbers. Picked, and I said it at the I time. I said I want to pick my own numbers. No, I'm not, I'm not saying I would have picked the numbers Here, they picked. I'll pick your nose. <laughs> but I said it when, when they... When I saw the winning numbers, I said, oh, they're all low numbers. They could be birthdays, ages. I was like, someone probably picked those. Let me see what the numbers were. We're not, tell me. Okay, ready? I, always, I like picking um, birthdays and I like picking ages for my numbers. Um, believe it or not, I don't well, think who, Is that who, her, that one? No. So this is the store clerk who sold the winning ticket. Her name is Tiana Bambada. And she said it's exciting. She's cute. That, that someone from her hometown won, but she can't remember who it was. There was a few people coming in and out last night. I cannot remember who it was. The winner manually selected their numbers rather than allowing the computer to randomly generate them, lottery officials said. I'm trying to go back and remember, but I have no clue at all, said the 27-year-old college student studying to become a physician. I would assistant. totally give that chick a big, huge chunk. I hope that the, the winner does. The jackpot ballooned for 15 weeks after 31 consecutive drawings without a winner since December 8th. The, it was $1.13 billion. Oh we still Lord. don't know who won. But And I'm sorry I don't have the numbers here. I'll put them on the screen. The numbers are all low. Do you think the low. person knows? Or you what? could we, just, like, we don't know sometimes. There, that person might have lost a ticket already. They may, have, they may have no idea. But I'm guessing with a jackpot this big... They know. Wait, and they're probably this, where, already where talking is this to from? New Jersey. Oh, good for them. So the winner, and I want to ask you about this. The winner has the option of taking, and I already know your answer, 
1.13 billion in annual installments over 30 years or a one-time lump sum. You take a one-time lump sum, you're better off taking the money, putting in an investment, making the money work for you. And by the way, you might die. Like you, you want to be in control of yeah. the money. Why would you wait 30 years? You set up a trust. Yeah, you set up a trust. There's all So the lump sum is 536. Why would you want the government to take care of your money? And by the way, Yeah. They're not going to make it rise like you would. You can just exactly. live off the interest and not No, even... you're getting what you get. You're going to get a 30th of 1.13 billion every year for 30 years. That number won't change. It would change if you had the money in your account, like you said, and you could manage your money. and You, you can could manage your invest money, it. invest it, and, and make money on, the other on your hand, dividends. On the other hand, if someone's an idiot, a lot of well, people play all, the lottery. They are, they are idiots. <laughs> like me. Uh, they could blow it all. How can you blow one point? It's wait, not. The one, lump sum, wait, let me finish. The lump sum is $536.6 million, and then you have to pay taxes if you live in a state with, I mean, you have to pay federal taxes. You're going to have... And, we would have to pay half of that in taxes. So we'd walk away with about $260, $260 million. Okay, so you put that in some kind of big fund and you just don't even touch it and you could just live off the interest. You could get $20, $30 million a year off of that. Of course. I mean, that's a couple million a month. Yeah. That's not bad. Right. That's not bad at all. It buy takes yourself, money to make money. <laughs> buy a couple of sick houses. Do you know what the odds are of winning Mega Millions? Don't feel bad if you didn't win. One in three hundred and two million five hundred seventy-five thousand three hundred fifty. One in more than three hundred million. Those are your odds of winning. And everyone's like, "Oh, I'm going to spend five hundred dollars on tickets because I'm going to have. I'm going to. It's the, the odds are better. No, it just shows you right there. The odds are on every ticket you buy. <laughs> There's no. You're better off just buying on one, one. Every set. And it's hard to wrap your head around this. <laughs> Every set of numbers has a one in 300 million chance of winning. Every there, set. So no matter how many you have, each one of those numbers has a one in 300 million chance of winning. So just because you have 500 or 250 options, they're still all long shots. They're long shots. There's, you're, you're better off just buying one ticket. There is the school of thought that, well, I have more, I have more numbers, obviously, so there are more chances. But it's like... It's, if you play getting one right is awesome. <laughs> like getting two or three right is rare. It's it's, it's, it's been, ridiculous. It, it went to a billion after everyone that has played. Thirty weeks or thirty drawings. Rick anyway. is manifesting that he's going to win the lottery. Oh yeah, we're going to win. And people probably don't know this. This is something about Rick Leventhal you don't know. Lucky Leventhal. I used to run a lottery terminal machine. When the lottery first started in 1976, okay, at Drug I Fair. I was one years old. In Silver Spring, Maryland, I was a clerk. And I was a floor clerk. I would stock shelves. And I worked every counter. Photo, tobacco. I sold cigarettes for like five bucks a carton. I worked at the pharmacy. And I, as a clerk, you know, just ring people up. And I worked the lottery machine every Saturday. Shut up. And there would be a line of like 50 people. How old were you in 1976? 16 years old. Well, obviously, we're 15 years apart. Duh. And I would punch out lottery tickets every day, every Saturday for like eight hours. And the line never stopped. Because I think they came from D.C. to Maryland. Because I don't think D.C. had a lottery at the time. Mm -hmm. And they loved the numbers game. The people who would play loved the numbers game. And so one time this guy would comes in. Would they play Keno? No, uh, it, I'm kidding. It was a daily I'm kidding. I'm joking. Three digit. Did they, did they play Fantasy Five or the Derby? They played the lottery, the lotto. I'm we totally had lotto. kidding, right? Oh. <laughs> but but they did. That's what I did. I punched out their tickets. Uh huh. So this one guy walks in to the front doors, and my terminal, my lottery terminal, was right by the front doors. He didn't get in line. He was just standing. There. He comes up to me. He goes, five six five. That's the number. That's the number today. Five six five. I go, really? Where? Are you, why aren't you buying it? And he goes, I got mine. And he, and he patted his pocket and he had a stack of tickets, probably $100 worth of 565. So I put a, I put a dollar on it. And that night I watched the numbers come out. Did you say, you know, I got five the, the ping pong, on it? <laughs> the ping pong balls came out. Five, six, five. Shut up. And I won $500 on my dollar bet. Shut up. I swear. This that guy, guy said five, six, 50 five. grand minimum in cash. If he had $100 in, in tickets, 50,000 cash for knowing the number that day. How did he know? 
why did he come in the door and tell me? Was he telling everyone? Like, I just, it, to this day, and that was 50 years ago almost. Did you say $5 foot long? <laughs> <laughs> Kelly's tired. We've been recording shows for the last eight hours. Legit. <laughs> but we're going to do shows from New York and Paris and London over the next week. We hope you'll tune in next week. We I want to play 565. Five. Well, we don't have the daily numbers game here in California. No? But wherever you are, when you're watching this, you should go out and play it. I hit I hit that five hundred dollar prize at least three times. I used to play a lot the daily numbers. Oh, okay, good to yeah. know. So when I was working the lottery machine, the, the end of the story is I I was like I'm gonna win this one day, the big prize, the the lotto. Oh, prize. you manifesting it? Yes. So my friend Kimberly manifests yeah. that chick. <laughs> got a boat, got a plane. She's got a freaking a house in Palm Beach, a house on Harbor Island. A house in the vintage in Palm Desert. She Don't they have a ski house too? No, oh. not yet. <laughs> she hasn't gotten that yet. But this chick says manifesting. She yeah. she she goes to some church that it's like the secret. She, oh yeah. She promises I hope they could hear me. This was in my back pocket. She promises that this manifestation stuff really works. So okay, if you're we'll out there and you want to something really bad. You can do it. You can do it. Uh, thanks again for watching. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do. And again, uh, head over to Patreon. Check out our Rick and Kelly show and our interview with Jill Zarin. It's it's really entertaining. And some, some news that was made from that interview. Yeah, it was good. Have a smash-tastic weekend, everyone. Bye, guys.